Hello you lot, Miller Corner here, welcome back once again, and if you've spent any time watching this channel, you'll know that I love Italian cars. There's something about their style, the passion that goes into making them, and the character that you just don't get from a lot of other countries' cars that makes Italian cars some of my absolute favourites. And it's not just the style of their cars, the Italians have also got a way with naming them that make them sound so much cooler, classier and sexier than A6 or XE ever could. However, if you peel back some of those names and find out what they translate into English as, quite a lot of them are just a little bit less sexy. We'll start simple. The Maserati Quattroporte is one of my all-time favourite cars. It looks wicked, it sounds incredible and it brought a touch of class to a category that the 5 Series and the Audi A6 just didn't have at the time. What's more that name, Quattroporte, is just so cool, isn't it? However, translate it into English and you've got something altogether less classy, shall we say, because that name translates into English literally as four door. Maserati four door proof that basically everything sounds better in Italian. Next up is a car you might have forgotten that existed, and that's the Alfa Romeo 8C. Arguably the first Alfa Romeo supercar, this thing was incredible. It looked gorgeous, it sounded stunning, and it's so limited run that if you do see one, it's a proper event. However, the car actually has a full title that not many people seem to remember, and that is the 8C Compotizioni which obviously translates into English as 8C competition. Now BMW actually use the word competition these days for the performance variants of some of their M cars, but from changing it from competizione to competition, it loses some of that class and some of that sophistication. Thank God Alfa kept the name of their car in Italian. Sticking with Alfa Romeo, but moving just a little bit more up to date, we're now looking at the fast variant of the Giulia Saloon. If you want to buy one with the completely, honestly, totally not Ferrari twin turbo V6, you'll be buying a Giulia Quadrifoglio. However, that glorious and cool sounding name is quite a lot less glamorous if you say it in English, because Quadrifoglio, after a bit of digging, turns out to mean four-leafed clover. Alfa Romeo Giulia four-leaf clover not sounding quite as cool or stylish, does it? However, those of you that know your Alphas will realise the significance of that name, because fast and sporting Alfa Romeos dating as far back as the 50s and even the 40s have long displayed that four-leaf clover emblem on their front wings. It's just Alpha's way of showing that they mean business. And you can even spec the Giulia and the new Stelvio with that four-leaf clover on the wing as well to show some heritage and show that you too are driving a quadrifoglio. But the final Alpha name on this list is one that you might not have even thought about. That is the GTV. It's a secondhand superhero, a car that I very much love, and a car with an extremely cool name. GTV is actually an acronym, and it translates into Italian as Gran Turismo Veloce. Those of you that know just a little bit of Italian will be able to work out what that name means, but if you can't, I'll spell it out for you. Gran Turismo Veloce translates into English as Fast Gran Tourer. And what with its gorgeous looks, sublime interior and the option of a V6 up front, the GTV more than meets its description of Fast Gran Tourer. Next we move on to Lamborghini. Now they've had a number of names over the years that have translated roughly as being winds or names of old gods, but there's one in particular that is just a little bit left field even for them, and that is the Murcielago. The Murcielago happens to be one of my all-time favourite supercars and its name makes it even cooler. But the name isn't actually Italian. Murcielago is in fact a Spanish word which translates into English as bat. How cool is that? Lamborghini Bat. What a name to have. What's more, if you see one in a darker colour with those scissor doors up, you can start to understand why it got that title. Lamborghini Bat. I'm going to be saying that all day now. Lamborghini Bat. What a cool name. Next, we move on to Ferrari. The 488 is one of the best supercars you can buy right now, and when they saw fit to pull some weight out of it and give it some more power to make the Pista version, they obviously thought it would be the perfect supercar to take to the track. Hence, Pista actually translates into English as track. 
It's a little bit lame and not that convoluted, but to be fair, can you come up with a better name for it? Nope, didn't think so. But Ferrari do like to keep it simple, hence the other one on this list is their luxury Grand Tourer, the GTC4 Lusso. Lusso translates into English as luxury, and when you see that gorgeous leather interior and you realise how comfortable and how practical the GTC4 Lusso is, I can't think of a better name for it. But I can think of a better name for this last one. One of the most famous and iconic Italian hot hatches is the Lancia Delta Integrale, the four-wheel drive, turbocharged rallying hero. Lancia being the name of the company, Delta being a Greek letter, as is common with Lancia's models, but that final bit, Integrale. Quite a cool word, isn't it? But not so much when you translate it into English, because Integrale, when translated into English, translates as, and I'm not making this up, whole wheat. Yep. Lancia Delta Whole Wheat. The perfect hot hatch as long as you're not gluten intolerant. So there you have it, some of the most iconic and famous Italian car names debunked. The Italians make some of the most beautiful, gorgeous sounding and fun to drive cars out there. And judging by how poorly these names translate into English, they've obviously got a bit of a knack for naming them as well. Italian car names are just some of the best in the world and when you say them with a proper Italian Italian accent and you start to appreciate the passion that goes into them, you find, like me, you love them even more. Thanks so much for watching this video everybody, I really really appreciate it. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you are notified when a new Miller Corner video is released. But for now, thanks once again for watching everybody and have a brilliant rest of your day. See you soon and have a good one.